These Chinese skyscrapers are so insane. American engineers are still trying to figure out how they're standing. You're looking at buildings that twist 2,000 feet into the sky, towers that generate their own power, and structures that form complete loops defying every rule of gravity. Engineering impossibilities that rewrote the textbooks. And every single one of them is already built, already occupied, already proving that what we thought was impossible in vertical construction was just the limit of our imagination. The first one literally twists itself into shape to survive forces that would tear normal skyscrapers apart. Shanghai Tower stands 2,073 feet tall, and it does something no other skyscraper had ever attempted at this scale. It rotates 120 degrees from bottom to top. You're watching a building twist itself like a corkscrew, and there's a reason American engineers said this couldn't work. Wind loads at this height generate forces that would rip a conventional tower apart, pressures that increase exponentially with every floor. But here's where it gets insane. That twist isn't decorative. It's the solution. By rotating the building's profile as it rises, the engineers reduced wind resistance by 24%, deflecting forces that would have required twice the structural steel. The building is actually two towers in one, an inner structure and an outer glass skin with a gap between them. That gap creates natural ventilation, reducing the cooling load, while the twist keeps the whole thing from swaying itself to pieces. It's standing there, occupied by 20,000 people daily, doing what the calculations said was impossible. But that was just one building solving one problem with rotation. The next tower decided to power itself. Pearl River Tower isn't just standing, it's generating electricity while you look at it. You see two massive openings cut right through the building at the mechanical floors, and American engineers thought those were architectural flourishes until they learned the truth. Those aren't windows. They're wind tunnels with turbines inside them. The building is designed to channel wind through its own structure, accelerating airflow through those openings where integrated turbines convert it directly to electrical power. But here's the part that made engineers recalculate everything. The entire facade is covered in photovoltaic panels that track the sun's position. The curtain wall itself is the solar array. This tower was designed to produce all of its own energy, turning a skyscraper into a vertical power plant. The aerodynamic shape funnels wind into those turbine openings, while minimizing drag on the rest of the structure. Every surface, every opening, every angle, serves the dual purpose of structural integrity and energy generation. It's not just a building, it's a machine. And it proved something American engineers didn't think was feasible, a super tall tower achieving net zero energy consumption. Then came a building that shouldn't even be able to stand. The CCTV headquarters forms a complete loop. And when Western structural engineers first saw the plans, they said it violated fundamental principles of load distribution. You're looking at two towers leaning toward each other connected at the top by a 75-meter cantilever with another horizontal section bridging them at the base. The forces here don't flow downward like normal buildings they're pulling, pushing, twisting in six different directions simultaneously. That cantilevered top section weighs 550,000 tons, all of it hanging in midair, all of it trying to tear the structure apart. The solution required a diagonal bracing system so complex that every single steel beam is a different length, a different angle, handling unique force vectors. The entire building is essentially frozen in a state of controlled tension with the angled towers and horizontal sections counterbalancing each other. During construction, the final connection of the cantilever had to happen at dawn when temperatures were precisely right, too hot, and the steel would expand too much, too cold, and it wouldn't fit they had a 30-minute window. The building is standing because engineers calculated forces that most structures never experience and designed joints that could handle stress from every direction at once. But someone decided that wasn't ambitious enough and built a tower that twists 90 degrees. Canton Tower rises 604 meters, and its lattice structure literally rotates a quarter turn from base to top. You're watching a hyperboloid that changes its elliptical cross-section as it climbs, the columns spiraling around each other in a double helix. American engineers looked at this and saw an impossible geometry problem. How do you build something where every connection point is at a different angle, where no two sections are parallel? The answer was a tube-in-tube -tube system where an inner concrete core handles vertical loads while an outer diagrid of steel columns manages the twist. 
But here's what made this insane. Those spiraling columns aren't just structural, they're the architectural expression of the forces themselves. The lattice tightens at the waist where wind loads peak, then opens up at top and bottom. Every column follows a mathematically precise curve, and during construction, every single connection had to be custom fabricated. There are no repeating elements in the entire structure. It's a building where geometry became structure, where the twist that makes it beautiful is the same twist that makes it stand. Then, engineers looked at that and asked, what if we built a skyscraper horizontally? Chongqing Kaotenmen spans 300 meters between two foundations, but instead of bridging thin like normal structures, it's a full-width skyscraper turned on its side over the confluence of two rivers. The horizontal section, a complete building lying flat, had to support its own weight while cantilevering from both ends. Engineers know that horizontal structures sag, that gravity wins when you fight it sideways. The solution required a mega truss system hidden inside that horizontal span, essentially a bridge structure scaled up to skyscraper dimensions. But the real engineering madness is the load transfer forces from that horizontal building have to redirect 90 degrees down into the vertical towers, then into foundations below the waterline. They're fighting river current, managing differential settlement between two separate foundation systems and keeping a horizontal tower from bending under its own weight. The structure uses tension cables and compression members working in concert, turning the entire building into one massive tensegrity system. What came next made that look simple. Chengdu Greenland Tower tapers as it rises, and that aerodynamic profile isn't about looks, it's about surviving in a seismic zone while reaching super tall heights. You're in earthquake country, where the ground can shift violently, and this tower had to remain stable during both seismic events and typhoon force winds. The structural system uses a reinforced concrete core with outriggers connecting to the perimeter at mechanical floors. But the real innovation is how the taper reduces wind loads progressively. As the building narrows, wind pressure decreases, but the structural efficiency increases because there's less mass to support. The foundation reaches deep into bedrock through soil that can liquefy during earthquakes using a pile system that flexes rather than breaks. Every floor is designed to move independently while remaining connected, allowing the building to sway without damage. Then came a building you can literally drive through. Gate to the east forms a 280-meter arch over an active highway, and the engineering challenge was supporting twin towers while leaving the center completely open for traffic. The loads from both towers meet at the top in a sky bridge that's also a functional floor of the building. American engineers looked at this and saw a catastrophic failure waiting to happen. Every vehicle passing underneath is a dynamic load. Every wind gust hits the arch differently, and the whole structure has to transfer weight around an enormous void. The solution required the towers to lean toward each other, using the arch geometry itself for stability. The sky bridge isn't just connecting the towers, it's a critical structural element keeping them from falling outward. Foundation work had to be done around operating traffic, with pile caps designed to handle loads that want to spread horizontally. It's a building that frames empty space, turning absence into architecture. But the Jin Mao Tower proved you could make ancient designs work at modern scale. Jin Mao Tower takes the traditional pagoda's stepped profile and scales it to 88 floors. Each tier steps back, and American engineers initially thought this was purely aesthetic, until they understood the wind engineering. Those steps break up vortex, shedding the alternating wind patterns that make tall buildings sway. By interrupting the airflow with setbacks, the building prevents resonance that could tear it apart. The structural system is a composite of steel and concrete, with an octagonal floor plan that distributes loads through eight corner mega columns. The central core handles vertical loads, while the perimeter columns manage lateral forces. During typhoons, when wind speeds exceed 100 miles per hour, those stepped sections force air to detach and reattach, preventing the sustained pressure that causes structural fatigue. It's proof that traditional architectural wisdom contained engineering knowledge that still works when you understand the physics. Then, someone decided to make buildings look like mountains. Chaoyang Park Plaza features twin towers with continuously curving facades that follow organic geometries, and this created an engineering nightmare. Every floor plate is a different shape, 
every column is at a different angle. Load paths can't follow straight lines when the building itself has no straight lines. American engineers design with orthogonal geometry because the math is straightforward. Forces go down, lateral bracing goes sideways. But these towers required structural systems that follow curves where loads spiral around the building's form. The solution used parametric design to calculate thousands of unique load conditions, then engineered custom connections for every single joint. The curved facade isn't just skin, it's part of the structural system, with the geometry itself providing stiffness. Construction required every piece to be fabricated individually, with tolerances measured in millimeters across elements weighing tons. What came next? Connected multiple towers in mid-air. The Tencent Shenzhen headquarters aren't just standing next to each other, they're linked by sky bridges that contain actual gardens hundreds of feet above ground. You're suspending landscaped parks between buildings, which means irrigation systems, drainage, soil weight, and live plant loads all floating in the air. Engineers know that connecting towers creates engineering headaches. The buildings move differently in wind, expand and contract with temperature changes, and settle at different rates. The joints where those bridges connect have to allow movement while maintaining structural integrity. But the real insanity is putting gardens up there. Soil retains water, adding dynamic loads that change with weather. Root systems need depth, requiring structural floors thick enough for planting. The bridges themselves become inhabited spaces, with people walking through gardens while the towers sway beneath them. Every connection point needed dampening systems to prevent vibration transfer while allowing controlled movement. Then, Shanghai built something that literally moves with the wind. Shanghai Bund Finance Center has a facade that shifts. And when American engineers first heard about a moving curtain wall on a super tall tower, they thought it was structural failure waiting to happen. But here's the insane part, it's intentional. The building uses a kinetic facade system where panels can adjust their position in response to wind pressure and solar heat gain. You're looking at a skyscraper skin that's actively responding to environmental conditions in real time. The engineering challenge was creating a moving system at heights where wind speeds exceed 100 miles per hour while maintaining the building envelope's integrity. Each panel is mounted on a track system with dampeners that allow controlled movement while preventing damage from excessive displacement. But the real complexity is the structural frame behind it. The building's actual load-bearing system had to be designed to support a facade that doesn't provide lateral bracing like conventional curtain walls. The moving panels reduce wind pressure by allowing air to flow through gaps that open and close, while also managing solar heat by adjusting angles throughout the day. It's a building skin that behaves like a living organism, constantly adapting to conditions while the structural frame behind it handles all the forces a static building would face. American engineers thought that was bold until they saw the Hangzhou Wangchao Center Tower. Hangzhou Wangchao Center Tower uses a reinforced concrete core with steel perimeter in soil conditions that made American engineers nervous. The foundation has to reach bedrock through layers of soft soil with varying bearing capacities, requiring a pile system that goes deep enough to hit stable ground while distributing loads evenly. But the real engineering achievement is the outrigger system, massive structural elements that connect the core to the perimeter at mechanical floors, essentially tying the building together at strategic points. When wind hits the building, those outriggers force the core and perimeter to work together, preventing differential movement that would crack the structure. The building is basically holding itself together through internal bracing that you can't see from outside. Then came a building trying to give back more than it takes. Greenland Hangzhou Century Center features a double skin facade with a ventilated cavity between layers. And this isn't about aesthetics, it's thermal engineering at scale. The outer skin shields the inner skin from direct solar heat while air flowing through the cavity removes heat buildup. But they didn't stop there. Rainwater harvesting systems are integrated into the structure itself, collecting precipitation and filtering it for non-potable use throughout the building. Energy recovery ventilation captures heat from exhaust air and uses it to precondition incoming fresh air. Every system is designed to reduce consumption while maintaining the environmental controls that supertalls require. It's a skyscraper trying to approach carbon neutral operation through pure engineering rather than offsets. Then, Hangzhou built an entire integrated city, 
Hangzhou Raffle City isn't just multiple towers, it's a unified complex where buildings share structural and mechanical systems while maintaining independence. The podium structure supports several towers simultaneously, requiring a foundation mat that handles concentrated loads from multiple sources while spanning open spaces for retail and public areas below. The towers are connected through skyways and shared mechanical floors, which means coordinating systems across buildings that sway differently in wind. Every connection point needs flexibility to allow movement while maintaining function. The mechanical systems HVAC, electrical, plumbing, serve multiple towers from shared equipment rooms, requiring distribution networks that cross between structures. It's urban planning as structural engineering, where the complex functions as a single organism despite being multiple buildings. And Hefei decided geometry itself was negotiable. Hefei Fei Kui Tower features crystalline faceted facades where every surface meets at non-standard angles, and this created a construction nightmare. You can't use standard formwork when no two floors are the same shape. Every floor plate required custom engineering, with columns that aren't vertical and beams that aren't horizontal. Load paths through angled members create moments rotational forces that don't exist in orthogonal structures. The solution required three-dimensional structural analysis calculating forces in every direction simultaneously, then custom fabricating every connection to handle its unique load condition. The facade itself had to be engineered panel by panel, with each piece of glass cut to different dimensions and installed at specific angles. It's a building where geometry became the engineering challenge, where visual complexity required structural complexity to match. You've just seen buildings that rewrote the rules. Structures that twist to survive wind, generate their own power, form complete loops in mid-air, span rivers horizontally, and turn curves into load paths. Engineers around the world are shocked because each one solved a problem that didn't have a solution before it was built. These aren't experimental concepts, they're standing, occupied, functional buildings proving that the limits we accepted weren't limits at all. Wind engineering through rotation, apertures, and diagrids. Foundations in water, permafrost, and seismic zones. Energy systems built into structure. Load distribution through curves, angles, and geometries that shouldn't work. Every single solution developed in these towers is now changing how engineers worldwide approach super tall design. The real shock isn't that they're standing, it's that they're standing everywhere, rewriting structural engineering faster than textbooks can keep up.